Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. And cold fear thrills through my veins that almost freezes up the heat of life. I'll call them back again to comfort me. Nurse! What should she do here? A dismal scene I needs must act alone. Come, fire. What if this makes you never work at all? Must I, of force, be married to the county? No. No. This shall forbid it. <sighs> Lie down there. What if it be a poison which the friar suddenly hath ministered to have me dead, lest in this marriage he should be dishonored because he married me before to Romeo? <sighs> I fear it is. And yet methinks it should not. For he hath still been tried a holy man. How if, when I'm laid into the tomb, I wake before the time that Romeo come to redeem me? There's a fearful point. Shall I not then be stifled in the vault, to whose foul mouth no healsome air breathes in, and there die strangled ere my Romeo comes? And if I live, is it not very like the horrible conceit of death and night, together with the terror of the place, as in a vault, an ancient receptacle where for this many hundred years my buried ancestors are packed, where bloody tibble yet but green on earth lies festering in the shroud, where, as they say, at some hours of the night, spirits resort, alack, alack, is it not like that I, so early waking, what with loathsome smells and shrieks like mandrakes torn out of the earth, that living mortal tearing them run mad, oh, if I wake, shall I not be distraught, environed with all these hideous fears, and madly play with my forefathers' joints? and pluck the mangled tibble from his shroud, and in this rage with some great kinsman's bone, as with a club, dash out my desperate brains. Oh, look! Methinks I see my cousin's ghost seeking out Romeo that did spit his body upon a rapier's point. Stay, tibble, stay! Romeo, I come. This do I drink to thee.